While being afraid of clowns is a very common fear, it didn't start out that way. From the early court jesters to the modern mascots, clowns have always had a unique stage presence. Oftentimes, they were celebrated street entertainers or gave sage advice to noble officials hidden behind subtle humor. It wasn't until the late 60s and 70s when clowns were featured prominently on television that the fear of clowns jumped to alarming heights. Take it from Carinkles, that's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post sugar rice Carinkles. From serial killers to extra dimensional beings, we count down the top four creepiest clowns. Hi everyone, my name's Rattlebones. I'm here to broaden your knowledge of the morbid and the macabre. I hope you enjoy these creepy stories as much as I do. Number four, the West Palm Beach Clown Killer. It was 10.45 a.m. on the morning of May 26, 1990. Marlene Warren was sitting at home when she heard a sharp rapping at her door. Answering it, she was greeted by a clown holding flowers and balloons. Before she even had a moment to express her surprise, the clown pulled out a gun and fatally shot Marlene in the face. Her son ran downstairs after hearing the gunshot, only to find his now deceased mother lying in a pool of blood. He told the police that he ran outside and watched as the clown killer turned towards him, taking note of her brown eyes before she sped away in her getaway vehicle. While the police initially suspected her husband of the slaying, Claiming he conspired with his lover, Sheila King, to murder his wife and collect the insurance money, they quickly ran into a dead end. Although Sheila King had brown eyes, and her face was chosen during a lineup from two grocery store workers who sold similar balloons to the murderous clown, both of the accused had an airtight alibi, and the DNA evidence was inconclusive in linking either of them to the murder. The murder is still unsolved to this day, which brings up the question, if they didn't kill Marlene Warren, then who or what did? And they say women don't have a sense of humor. This lady's was to die for. Number three, security tape clowns. During the month of October in 2014, a clown craze swept certain cities across the nation. Starting in California, clowns were spotted by the dozens, photobombing tourists and generally being creepy around the city. There were numerous reports of clowns trespassing in cemeteries in the dead of night. That's, that's fucking terrifying, that's disgusting, what the fuck? Once it spread to Florida, it took a more sinister turn. Clowns started to creep into people's yards and sat idly on the porch for hours. This particular clown knew it was being recorded and clearly relished in the opportunity to freak out the homeowners. Was this a harmless prank on the lead up to Halloween, or some sort of clown thought virus that spread from city to city? A cartoonish meme gone wrong. Once Halloween was over, the mysterious clowns vanished as quickly as they came. I look forward to the sequel, Creepy Elves on Christmas. Number two. The Strange Death of Francisco Felix Francisco Felix was once the notorious drug lord of the Felix family clan. He was known for various drug-related criminal activities, along with having a stranglehold on the drug trade in Tijuana in the early 1990s until he was arrested in 1993. He served prison time for almost a decade before being released. It was almost another decade later before he would meet his untimely death at the hands of a clown. He had rented out a beach house in Mexico, hosting a grand party. This was the perfect opportunity for a gunman to sneak inside dressed as a friendly entertainer before shooting Francisco multiple times in the head and chest. While there is video of the footage on YouTube, you don't actually see the murder, just a quick glimpse of the assassin before Francisco's death. While this was most likely related to his criminal history, the clown was never found. Message of the day, kids. If you're going to commit murder dressed like a clown, you'll always get away with it. Number one, the Harley Quinn. This one is a strange case. When Dan Mitchell was a child, he used to be visited by a being we refer to as the Harley Quinn. It would only show up at night when Dan was in bed. It would sing songs to him, dance and parade around the room. The creature was androgynous, with wide open eyes and an always open round mouth. He would tell his parents about it and they would dismiss the creature as an imaginary friend. As he got older, the creature would make its appearance known to the family members in subtle ways. His mother had a recurring dream about a man dressed as a woman knocking intensely on their front door. The father would hear footsteps from the upstairs bedroom and then quickly forget he heard them when asked about the noise. His brothers were chased by a homeless looking man riding an old Tommy bike. There were many encounters throughout Dan's life, which culminated in him passing on the Harley Quinn to his children. At dinner, his daughter told him, there was a man in my room. He got inside my head. This was the last straw for Dan and he had to get rid of the being completely or forever live in fear. He needed to set up a meeting with the Harley Quinn, and it was then that the vivid dreams started. Dreams which told him to meet at a certain park at a certain time, and he would get the answers he desperately needed. 
He sat on a park bench just before sunrise and felt an eerie presence beside him. Although it was dark out, he made out the familiar features of the Harley Quinn and spoke with it for a few moments. What follows is a direct quote from Dan himself. It was an old androgynous human-like being that still possessed the features of a child with that typical shocked look upon its face. It became clear almost immediately that I had entered into the mind of something that exists so far beyond humanity that not even in my most profound moments of despair or spiritual elation have I ever experienced anything like it. It has a certain animal nature to it even though it is far above the animal kingdom in respect to its self-awareness. I am convinced that it has the potential to destroy the world if it wished. This type of being operates by an entirely different set of rules, rules that transcend morality in ways we don't understand. He ran to his car in fright after the initial encounter, and although he can feel the Harley Quinn in the corners of reality now, it has stopped tormenting him. After the meeting, he's now convinced that there are more Harley Quinns out there. Dan leaves us with this. They are disguising themselves as homeless people, I am sure of it. They are hiding out and carrying out some kind of mission. I say this because on several occasions in my childhood and in adulthood, she has presented herself to me in such a manner. I want to say that this shocked appearance on its face seems related to the trials it has been through. There are a ton of people who don't believe his story, or have other ideas of what it might be, including aliens, fallen angels, and interdimensional beings. While we may never understand what Dan actually saw, we can at least be wary. Wow, that got real dark real quick. I appreciate you listening to my tales of the morbid and the macabre. I'll see you next time.